past to Africa. For almost four decades, Robert Mugabe has been the undisputed leader, tyrant if you like, of Zimbabwe. Now he's 93, frail, not just physically, but politically too. The succession battle has taken an ugly turn. The president is under detention. The military has taken over, but they deny reports of a coup. So what exactly is happening in Zimbabwe? Here's the latest. Residents of Zimbabwe's capital Harare woke up to sounds of artillery and heavy gunfire early Wednesday morning, raising fears of an attempted coup. During the chaotic hours, the country's military took over national broadcaster, the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation. Hours later, military spokesperson appeared on the national television denying reports of a coup and assured President Robert Mugabe and his family were safe. We wish to assure the nation that His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Commander-in-Chief of the Zimbabwe Defence Forces, Comrade Araji Mugabe, and his family are safe and sound and their security is guaranteed. We are only targeting criminals around him who are committing crimes that are causing social and economic suffering in the country in order to bring them to justice. As soon as we have accomplished our mission, we expect that the situation will return to normalcy. Three explosions were also heard on the streets of Harare early morning as military vehicles blocked the road to country's parliament. During the initial hours, Zimbabwe's envoy to South Africa, Isaac Moyo, dismissed talk of a coup and claimed the government was intact. But the latest report suggests Zimbabwe's military has detained Finance Minister Ignatius Chombo. Chombo was a leading member of the so-called G40 faction of the ruling ZANU-PF party, led by Robert Mugabe's wife, Grace, who had been vying to succeed the 93-year-old president. The military has also cancelled leave of its personnel, we call upon all the war veterans to play a positive role in ensuring peace, stability and unity in the country. To members of the Zimbabwe Defence Forces, all leave is cancelled and you are all to return to your barracks with the immediate effect. The current situation in Zimbabwe is said to be the result of President Mugabe's rift with the military after he sacked the Vice President last week. Vice President Emerson was viewed by many as a likely successor to the President. The army viewed his removal as part of Mugabe's plan to hand over power to his wife Grace Mugabe, an army chief had threatened to intervene back then. Mugabe, who is the longest-serving leader in Africa, came to power in the 1980s after Zimbabwe's independence from Britain. Meanwhile, the embassies of the US and Britain in Zimbabwe have instructed their staff to remain at home due to the ongoing political uncertainty. The US also closed its embassy, saying, Due to ongoing uncertainty in Zimbabwe, the US embassy in Harare will be minimally staffed and closed to public on November 15th. Embassy personnel will continue to monitor the situation closely. Bureau Report, we on. And joining us this evening, uh, Pindai Dubey, a journalist from Harare in Zimbabwe and Lance Guma, managing editor at uh, Nehanda Media with us from London this evening. Good evening to both of you. Pindai, let's begin with you. What's happening in Harare? Is Robert Mugabe still the president? Uh, yes, yeah, good, good evening. Uh, what is happening is that... Uh, President Robert Mugabe, as you mentioned, is uh, under house arrest. Uh, that's what we understand. But the army is in full of control of the situation. The, the army, as I'm talking to you, is the one which is running the country. Um, they've taken over the government. And uh, what is happening is that they are in the streets. But uh, right now it's towards the evening. And uh, they, 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 they're still not blocking the roads. They've moved a bit. Uh, from the roads, but they are still in the in, in the in the streets. 
uh, but the situation is normal. People are going on with their businesses currently. But otherwise, it's calm and very tense. Uh, there are reports, of course, of more people who were in the Generation 40. This is a faction which was led by a group of uh, ministers which were uh, aligned to Grace Mugabe, the first lady. But otherwise, the situation is calm, but the army is in control uh, at, at the moment. Lance, uh, the army says it's not a coup. The media is calling it a takeover. How are the two different? Um, I think the army are being, being very clever here and uh, legalistic because I don't think they want uh, regional intervention in Zimbabwe. So by calling it, um, by not calling it a coup rather, they are in a way uh, preempting regional intervention. And um, I think really um, what we have here is a hostage situation because the army have assured uh, South African President Jacob Zuma um, that uh, Mugabe's security, they're guaranteeing his security, and uh, although he's under house arrest, you get the sense they are almost saying, if you try and intervene, we will not be able to guarantee the security of the president. So I think this is a hostage situation, and I think negotiations, intense negotiations involving several neighboring countries are currently taking place. I foresee them trying to engineer a dignified exit for Mugabe. He's nearly 94 years old, so I do not think there is any political capital to be gained from humiliating such an old man. Binday, maybe you can throw some light on this. The military doesn't want regional intervention. That's exactly what's happening. South Africa, for one, is very concerned and is looking at the situation closely. We uh, saw President Zuma's statement earlier today. Who is going to take yes, over in the event of Robert Mugabe being dethroned? Yes, uh, like what Lenzi says, uh, the army says they are in full, full control and they, they, have, they have assured the Sadak that Mugabe is safe. The, uh, the, the army is also saying that they, because the war veterans actually in the afternoon, they said they want an inclusive uh, government which includes opposition parties, everyone um, in, in that group. So... We are yet to see what will happen. Uh, there were also unconfirmed reports that Emerson Mnangagwa might be appointed to take over by the army, but it's not yet, uh, it has not yet happened. So from the war veterans, you know, the war veterans are aligned to the army. They were working together, uh, uh, calling those uh, young ministers who had taken over the ruling party uh, criminals. So that's a hint that uh, maybe the army will call all uh, an inclusive government to run Zimbabwe. We are yet to hear what will happen. They haven't given another update yet since uh, that uh, uh, morning uh, statement which they gave uh, early today. So we are waiting for updates. Uh, the government hasn't said anything. What, it's only Zuma who issued a statement. Lance, uh, how do the people of Zimbabwe see uh, their president? Uh, is it possible to objectively gauge public opinion in a country like Zimbabwe? Um, we are hearing reports of spontaneous celebrations in South Africa. I, I think what's confusing people is the statement from the army that uh, Mugabe is safe, he's under house arrest. So I think people are still trying to process whether this is the end of Mugabe. Is he going to remain as president, as some form of puppet president, while the army controls the strings behind the scenes? No one knows. But um, we are hearing from our sources that the army generals and indeed those behind this coup are trying to follow a very legalistic route. By this I mean they will try and engineer Mugabe's dignified exit they are going to try and get their preferred candidate, who is the sect Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa, to ascend to the uh, presidency via the ZANU-PF conference. So I, I don't think they want the new president to be there as a result of a coup. So they are simply stepping in temporarily, managing the ZANU-PF civilian process and have Mnangagwa emerge the leader from a ZANU-PF process. So in the end, no one can turn around and say, you are president because of a coup. It will look like he has been, you know, 
democratically elected within the zanu pf process to replace mugabe as president so that is my reading of the situation but i also think this was inevitable because i also do not think this was a fight between the generals and mugabe it was a fight between the generals and mugabe's wife mm. so i think this is you know for someone who was in power for 37 uninterrupted years mugabe overplayed his hand by trying to get his wife to be the president that is the biggest mistake that he made and what is unfolding in zimbabwe is a result of mugabe trying to impose his wife some reports say the wife has left. Uh, maybe Pinde can uh, shed some light on this. The wife has left the country. There are senior uh, uh, cabinet ministers and prominent citizens who are also under house arrest or under arrest. Uh, can you confirm any of that? Yeah, what we hear, uh, what we hear is that uh, Grace Mugabe has left the country. But uh, what I can emphasize is that it's not yet confirmed. But wh what we have heard so far is the arrest of these ministers which are under house arrest. And we have also witnessed uh, police being arrested uh, by uh, some police officers at the parliament who were co controlling the parliament, uh, being arrested by the army. That one I witnessed. So uh, there is a lot of speculations, some which are not yet confirmed. But what we understand is that people, high uh, officials, government officials, uh, ministers who have been uh, arrested. So we are waiting, uh, we are yet to hear uh, an update from the army on who is in custody, who is not in custody, and where is Grace Mugabe. But they insist that Mugabe and his family is is safe. But what we don't know, whether the first lady is also safe because she was allegedly leading this group, which they called criminals, which they wanted to deal with. So we are yet to confirm, to get confirmation from them, the army. And uh, before I let you go, Pinde, I, I want you to tell our viewers, give a sense of what this Wednesday afternoon is like for the people in Zimbabwe. Are there fears of violence? We know that the army trucks are patrolling the, the streets of Harare. Are offices open? Are schools open? What is this afternoon like? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's 50-50. What happened today is that um, some schools, some people, after uh, uh, watching uh, the statement by the army chief, and uh, another army general, uh, Moyo. Some, they didn't go to work. Some, they didn't take their children to work. But some, uh, they, to school, some went to work. Uh, some uh, took their children to school. So it was 50-50. But right now, it's very quiet, very quiet. Although the army is in the streets, cars are moving, people are going on with their business. But the soldiers are in the streets. They are mainly... Uh, near the, the the government building where Mugabe's office is, they are at parliament, they are at the state broadcaster, the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation. But generally, it's very calm, there's no violence at the moment. But the, the other thing, people we spoke to in the streets, they are very happy actually. The majority of people whom we spoke to in the streets, they said they were uh, they were waiting for this day because Mugabe has ruled Zimbabwe for the past 37 years. They have never known change. So they are happy. As Lenzi emphasized, uh, uh, said, people are happy with what happened. But they are waiting to see what, what, where this will take us to.